Here we go. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to be recording today's meeting for the ambassadors who were not able to attend and also for anyone else who'd like to refer back to it later. Uh, thank you again. My name is Janan from the Children's Forum and Teach Early Childhood Scholarship. I am the outreach coordinator. Hi, everyone. I am Evelyn Thomas, and I'm the outreach specialist. And I see here we have on the phone with us on this call quite a few attendees from across the state. Evelyn, can you tell us where some of our folks are from today? Yeah, it looks like we've got ELC of Hillsborough on the line, uh, Tallahassee Community College, Central Florida Institute of Training, or CFIT, the Early Learning Coalition of Pasco and Hernando, uh, the Early Learning Coalition of Flagler and Volusia in the East Coast near Daytona Beach. We've got the ELC of Southwest Florida in Fort Myers, ELC of Orange County, Child Care Resources out in Vero Beach, Florida, the Early Learning Coalition of Miami-Dade and Monroe, located in the Florida Keys, lucky them, Miami Early Learning Career Center, uh, which is actually an office of the Children's Forum, so welcome, thank you for joining us. We've also got St. Petersburg and Pinellas County, we have the ELC of Osceola County, um, the Mid-Florida Community Services of Volusia County, Florida, the ELC of Broward, and the ELC of Alachua. So quite a diverse group, a lot of ELCs, but we've also got some uh, training institutions and colleges on the line. So it's great to see you all here. Wonderful. Awesome. Again, thank you everybody for joining us today. And we want to thank you also for taking the time out and serving as an ambassador. We're going to be talking today a little bit through some of your important roles and responsibilities, as well as giving an overview and updates on what's been changing across our TEACH program. It's because of you and all of your community outreach efforts that we're able to keep our TEACH program going and growing stronger. And we really are thankful for that. So in today, again, webinar, we're going to be recovering some of those scholarship updates and overviews, as well as talking about some of the resources and roles for you as an ambassador. So the TEACH program, as many of you know, and some of our newer ambassadors, it's the early childhood scholarship program that provides scholarships to early educators, directors, facility owners, and family child care educators. These scholarships include early learning credentials, college credits, and degrees in early childhood education. TEACH works with the early childhood workforce to help increase recognition and encourage commitment to the field as we support continuing education. Our scholars and sponsors share a small portion of the tuition and expenses. Uh, TEACH covers the majority and Evelyn will discuss later these elements on later slides. With our TEACH program, we really do aim to empower our workforce. The national average turnover for early care and education is 30 to 40%. But the Florida rate is less than 6%. And we really like to attribute that to programs such as TEACH, incentives, and other county initiatives that provide educational and financial supports to our early educators. The TEACH program also incorporates a required commitment from the sponsoring center and from the participant to remain in the field after they've completed their given scholarship or contract. And so this helps to benefit not only the center by retaining those highly, highly qualified staff, but it also helps the students as well because now they have that continuous care from those wonderful educators and caregivers. Okay, All and right, Evelyn. We, thank you, Tania. Um, to cover a few of our scholarship options, which I'm sure as many of you know, we do have quite a few. So there's, we're just hoping to have something for everyone, um, no matter what level you're coming in at or what level you'd like to be. So we do have the staff credential, that's gonna be the initial or the renewal. 
And just as a note, the staff credential program must be on the approved DCF list. Um, and we can drop the link in the chat box as well and provide that for you um, in an email for that list. We have the director credential, initial or renewal, the national CDA assessment or renewal. Um, again, as a note, the CDA assessment educational prerequisite is 120 hours. And then we step in and cover the assessment fees, or I'm sorry, we partner to, co to help cover the cost of the assessment fees. The three to six credit hour model, that's one semester. This may be good for someone that's looking to just kind of dip their toes in, see if they're ready to go back to school for full time, um, or if they just need those credits to get to that next level. The infant toddler certificate is a 12 college credit program. This one is specific to participating colleges and institutions. Um, and we do have listed in our ECE direct training directory through the TEACH website, a list of all the participating colleges that are eligible for this scholarship. It's gonna be the purple button on our homepage and we'll show you how to get there in a following slide as well. Then for our degree models, we've got an associate degree uh, with you, you see the different options listed there, the bachelor's degree and the master's. And for these programs, um, TEACH does work with over 70 colleges and universities throughout the state that offer online, in-person and hybrid coursework to fit scholars needs. And again, those are all listed with more specific information in the ECE directory it really breaks down the options at each uh, individual college and university that we partner with. And the master's degree is only available right now online through the University of North Florida. It's a master's of education in educational leadership, early childhood education um, specifically. And that was created through a TEACH partnership with the college. So that's why it is specific to that university only. Moving on to the compensation um, for all of our different models, it can be a little bit more specific, but these are kind of just our general numbers that we're looking at. So for the majority of our um, scholarships, TEACH does cover up to 80% of the tuition and 90% of the books for eligible center employees, directors, and owners. And for family child care educators, uh, TEACH can provide up to 90% of tuition and 90% of books. The per semester stipend of $250, or for the infant and toddler certificate, that's going to be up to $300. Um, this covers, this is meant to cover expenses incurred while in school. So this is kind of theirs to um, cover any additional expenses. Examples are purchasing books, that remainder percentage, paying for internet, gas, childcare, anything that gets you to school. For the infant and toddler, the stipend is 300 and the bonus is a bit more as well. It's gonna be 1200, they're on the higher end and that's meant as an extra incentive because that particular special specialization is underutilized. So it's more highly sought after in the field. The bonuses are awarded to scholars who complete their contract. That's also their scholarship. We kind of switch between those, but the, there's always a contract for any scholarship model. So when they do complete that, these um, bonuses that they'll receive range from 500 for credential renewals or the three to six credit model up to 1500 for um, scholarships such as a staff, initial staff credential or a national CDA. For degree-seeking students, TEACH offers a tiered bonus structure to encourage progress within the scholar's degree program, keep them going and earning that degree. Scholars earning 13 or more credit hours receive a higher bonus amount upon completion of their contract. And those amounts range from 800 to 1500. TEACH can also assist active scholars who are currently enrolled in courses with a 90% reimbursement or up to $500 on essential tech purchases. So that can be a laptop, tablet, desktop computers, um, and counselors are always happy to provide more information on that because that's a really 
we're really excited to be able to offer that as well. The paid release time reimbursement for the sponsoring program, um, the center facility or family child care home would, um, I'm sorry, in the contract, they are required to offer three hours paid release time per week. And then TEACH reimburses that at a rate of Florida's minimum wage, which right now um, is $10, but we know that that'll be going up. So the TEACH reimbursement rate will increase with that along with the um, Florida rate plus $2 an hour. So right now for 2022, that's gonna be at $12 an hour. And of course, TEACH does offer the counseling and administrative support. So our counselors and application process specialists are available to answer specific program questions and provide support to the teachers, directors, owners, everyone that's involved in the partnership with TEACH. They're always happy to help as well. So thank you. Um, so please right now, if you have your smartphone on you, feel free to go ahead and scan that code we, we've got up on the screen, and that will take you to our TEACH website. If you'd prefer to type it in, it is teach-fl.com. And once you're on that site, you can click the green button at the bottom of the screen to see all of our scholarship models. It'll show you the scholarship booklet with this cute little boy that we've got. Um, that's our most updated one. As you can see, the Spanish is still under construction. We're hoping to have that as available as soon as possible. It will be up very shortly. Um, and in that model brochure, we do have all of our schol scholarships broken down by role. So examples would be the center teachers or employees, center directors, center owners, and family child care home educators. Um, that also breaks down what TEACH will provide and the responsibilities of the scholar and the sponsor for each model. Those are gonna be listed on pages eight to 23 if you wanna scroll down to those real quick. Um, it is kind of a lot of information, so feel free to take it in. And then of course, as always, if you've got any questions as you're looking through it, you can type them in the chat or um, contact us later on by phone or email and we'd be happy to connect you with a counselor that can answer any specific questions. And we will have these new books printed and available for you in August. So these are some exciting updates that we've made to our scholarship models. We, um, as you can see on this slide, the bonus amounts have doubled and some more than doubled for different models. So for example, that student access stipend has increased. It was previously 125. We've upped it to 250 per semester. And then as you're looking through, like I said, you might see that some of them have more than doubled. So that's a really exciting for us and for the scholars. Um, we're very thankful to our funders, the Division of Early Learning, to have approved the increase in bonuses and stipends. That was beginning in spring of 2022 and moving forward. So our, I'm sorry, our counselors have been working diligently to get all of the eligible scholars their bonuses. So anyone that completed in April of 2022, they had a credit applied to their accounts. Um, and just as a note on this page, we do have the degree seeking Family child care educators receive a higher tiered bonus. That went up to 1,050 all the way to 1,500. And again, that's just to keep them encouraged in their progress and moving forward toward that degree. Thank you so much for that, Evelyn. So we're gonna be talking here, uh, talking about the portal. So as of July 1, all participants that is scholars and sponsors in the TEACH program must have a portal account. Our counselors have been calling all of the current and participating individuals to get those set up and they'll continue to do so, but we are pretty much caught up on all of them. Any new person who comes in to apply will actually access the portal and you can scan the QR code here that will take them straight to the portal as well as where they can start on their TEACH applications. 
They'll be using these portal access to make payments, also for employment verification, and it'll just keep the process going. Um, and we're relying a lot less on paperwork and getting things done digitally. But if you hear of any issues that people are having in accessing the site or accessing the applications and portals, please have them give our office a call. So in regards to the online application, when they go to the page, it will give them the list of all the information and items that they need, which you'll find here on the screen. Um, it also contains a list of approved translation and evaluation services for anyone who might have a foreign degree or diploma. We'll also put that link here in the chat box and you are more than welcome to share that out with your participants in your counties. Again, if you hear of any issues or questions, direct those individuals to our offices. So on to the great joys that you guys are in being ambassadors in here. We are so, so thankful and we can't say that enough to you guys. You really do rock. Each year you're able to share accomplishments and success stories with us. And this is great information that we use to not only highlight our scholars on social media, but we can also share it out in our annual reporting, and especially to our reporting back to Teach National. We want to hear those stories. We want to keep them coming. So if you have any current stories, please email us them to us now at teachoutreach at thechildrensforum.com. We'll also drop that email address here in the chat box as well as in an email for you all. We are working on our website so that um, there will be a portion where students will be able in the future to submit their story straight online as well as submit any pictures. And we'd love to see that influx because then we're able to, again, spotlight and share all of our wonderful stories out with the public. So another important note here for ambassadors, if you happen to be in Broward, Hillsborough, Miami-Dade, or Osceola counties, we would love for you to also be an ambassador for our Early Childhood Educator Incentives Program. Now this program, you may have previously heard of it as Wages. It still is an affiliate of Child Care Wages, and it rewards our early educators with financial payments based on their level of education and their sustained employment in these participating counties. The program is funded through local collaborations. This could be with the Early Learning Coalition, Children's Services Councils, and even private contributors. Together with TEACH and incentives for those eligible counties, they can go hand in hand. TEACH can provide the education for students to continue their growth and learning, while incentives rewards them as they're doing such. So if your coalition, your CSC, or other agencies may be interested in becoming a funding partner and bringing incentives to your county, please let us know and we'd be happy to connect you with that incentives coordinator. And as ambassadors, we would also be able to provide you some incentives resources, including RAT cards or flyers that you could share out in your communities to help really promote that program. Okay, thank you, Janan. Um, kind of fitting on that, providing rack cards and resources. We do have our program materials order for ambassadors. So any active ambassadors can request these free materials by submitting an order form to us. Again, at that um, teach outreach at the children's forum.com email. Uh, if you don't have the order form, I'd be happy to provide that to you as well. You can just send us a quick request and I'll get it right back. Um, many of our ambassadors will request these materials for use at provider meetings, local conferences, or just to have on display at any on-site. You might have a resource center at your ELC or having students come and visit you at your college or university. And it's always good to have these kind of um, tangible items that people can take with them that have the TEACH logo and brand name so they keep us current and out there thinking about TEACH, sharing the, the word and what we can do for you. And of course, they always have, we try to include our phone number and email, and that's our best way to contact us. Um, so these requests can take up to 10 business days. I do try to get them out sooner, but I can't always guarantee it. So if you know that you have 
some kind of event or again you just like to have them on hand please get those requests to me as soon as possible i'm always happy to fulfill them um it just you know things come up so i never want you to be without them and we do try to keep these current too we have some rotating ones so even in this picture um we've kind of shuffled through maybe got rid of some and then added some new ones as well. So always be on the lookout for some new materials. We'll always share those with you when we do get them in. We do our best to fulfill all of your requests, but sometimes again, with just those shifts in materials and everything, we may not always be able to provide exactly what you want, but we're always willing to work with you to get you the materials that best suit your needs. Um, and we just do ask that you please be mindful when making those requests. So we can't send a whole big box of like a thousand materials all at once. Um, it is a little bit better to do it in spurts. Or like I said, if you do know you've got like a big conference or big event coming up, just let us know with plenty of time ahead if possible. And then we can figure out ways to get you what you need. Next one, please. Thank you. We've also got our monthly outreach activity report, which is probably where most of you know me from. I do send these requests out monthly via email to our distribution. And um, thank you to everyone who submits their monthly outreach report on time. For anyone who might be having difficulty with it, we do know we've heard of some people having issues with the PDF formatting and things like that um always please feel free to reach out to me i'm happy to help and get those issues resolved but and for anyone who might be struggling with what to include what not to include we do have some possible examples of outreach activities that you can engage in um, so these might be phone calls emails meetings resources and exhibit tables and technical assistance so for these phone calls and emails and the technical assistance, we don't expect you to be the experts on teach. We don't expect you to step into that counselor role and know all the ins and outs. Just as long as you can provide some basic information and then always our contact information and routing them back to our office um, where they can provide the more detailed answers. So we really appreciate, like Janan said, we can't thank you enough for all that you do being our boots on our boots on the ground being the face of the teach scholarship truly um you know we so appreciate you for that and we always want to hear about any of the activities and outreach that you engage in so you can make a note on this sheet of um the estimated number of phone calls that you've received concerning teach each month it doesn't, again, doesn't have to be super exact numbers and it can be a range of dates. If you know you had a busy week or something like that, you can always just kind of include uh, what you picked up on from that month. There's also some virtual methods that you can use to engage um, people in your area. So you might not be going out into the field or have your office doors open to the public, but Things like posting a link to teach on your website or a social media post or email blast out to your distributions is always helpful. We do usually see return on those. So if that's something that you're interested in doing and you might need some help from us or some suggestions, again, we're always happy to help. Your outreach team is here for you. Um, and then along with this form, we are exploring an online reporting option. So if you're interested in that, um, please let us know and let us know what works for you, what doesn't work for you. We always want to hear back about your experiences with it as the people that are using it. So we really appreciate the good and the bad. <laughs> and um, if it's something that you'd be interested in to have it as a virtual option on the website, um, online reporting, then please let us know and we would be happy to get that project working and um, hopefully up on our website soon. And speaking of the website, we do have a new teach website under construction. It's in the works. We are super excited about it here in the office. We've been 
um, just trying to make it as user friendly as possible, as inviting as possible, and so that everyone that visits it can get the most out of it between our scholars, our ambassadors, um, you know, our owners and sponsors, everything like that. So we will be sharing with you when the new site launches. We're aiming for hopefully the end of this month, possibly early August. Um, and again, once that comes out, we will be letting you know. And then when you're in there and using it, please give us your feedback too. If there's something that you really like about it or something that you really don't, um, like I said before, we just we always want to hear from you and make sure that we're providing the best experience possible. All right, and that brings us to the end of our ambassador webinar. So thank you for joining us. Um, and now we'll open it up to the chat or if you'd like to come off mute and ask us any questions that you may have. Okay, I do see a question here. If the student is a teacher in a public school, how do they obtain a DCF license or what are the steps for that portion? Okay, that's a great question. So they would need to call our teach office and they can ask to speak to Emily. She is our scholarship support coordinator. She's able to assist these individuals in creating their business accounts and she'll be able to pull up a, a unique identifier for each of these. So they don't necessarily have to obtain a DCF license, but we'll work with them to get a unique identifier created. And another question, can someone be reimbursed after initially paying for a director's credential renewal? Uh, yes, they can. As long as the person paid for the credential within our fiscal year, then we can reimburse them. So we currently, as of July 1, are in the funding year. It's July 1, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. So if someone were to do their director's credential or that renewal, let's say in August or September, and then they don't apply for teach until December or January, then yes, they're still within the fiscal year and we're able to do that reimbursement. Those are great questions. Yeah, great questions. And again, if you get other questions that uh, become a little bit more involved and they get into the weed, so to speak, then again, have them call our office, have them send us an email, or you can forward their email if they send it to you on to us to that teach outreach at the Children's Forum. And we'll do our best to connect them with the right scholarship counselor or the right admin so that they can get their questions answered and make sure that everyone is still in line. All right, so again, thank you so much for joining us today. Like we said, we'll record this session, so we'll be able to share it out with everyone so you can see the PowerPoint slides as well as uh, all the information. You'll have access to those QR codes so you can share those out with your participants in your county so they can go straight to the applications and the websites. So we hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks again for joining us. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone.